So hey everybody, welcome. It's Bob Martin here from World Fishing Alliance and uh, we're happy to have Ashley Veglin from the Hook, Line and Threader Company with us this afternoon. And uh, the product that she has is just unbelievably unique. And um, first, let me, let me give a little bit of a backstory here real quick before Ashley uh, tells you about what she's doing. But we met in, um, and Ashley, maybe you don't remember this. I don't, I don't know. St. Paul, Minnesota at the ice fishing show. You remember that, right? Oh, yeah. And, that, you know, I came up and I saw what she was doing and I, I thought, wow, that's really cool. I'd never seen anything like that. And so I shot a video of you giving a demonstration of the product. And to you, is probably just some other, you know, guy taking a video and then I walk away. Well, what happened was we put the video on our uh, Facebook page and the thing went nuts. I don't know how many we got, but it might have been close to a million views. Yeah, I think it was at almost a million within three days. That's unbelievable. Have you ever had, you know, one of your videos do that? One other time, yes. When I when I very first started doing it, we had one other video do that. And it's just, it always surprises me because you never really know which one is going to explode and which one is going to fizzle out. But it's the impromptu ones, like you coming up and taking that video. That's why I'm always like, yes, take video, take pictures. Yeah. You know, whatever we can do to help get this out there. And, and well, I, I think, and, you know, I always say more on me for I shot the video with my phone you know, vertically Vertical, instead yeah. of like that. And it would have been better, you know, if I had done that, but still it was a, it was a cool little, um, you know, demo video and it got t a ton of hits. It was, it was really, really cool. We got a lot of feedback from it and hopefully you got some sales from it as well. Yeah, sure did. Yeah. It was busy. Well, so what, what exactly is hook line and threader Ashley for people that don't know what this is? Why don't you tell us about it? Yeah. So um, hook, line, and threader is a bait rigging system. Uh, more specifically, it's a bait threading tool that allows you to rig live and artificial bait. And when you use it on live bait, you actually go through the bait fish's straight line intestinal tract. And the threader just kind of looks like this, looks like a needle, and it's a straight shot from the bait, um, from the bait mouth right to the rear. So you can rig that live bait and the bait will actually stay alive and swimming on your line, which is key. And it stays a lot instead of, you know, jamming a hook through its back or its lip or wherever, um, you know, and having it not swim naturally, it stays alive longer and swims naturally much longer, right? Yeah, exactly. When you hook them through the back of the eye, you're either going to kill it right away or you're going to lose it when you're casting or trolling. This way, when it's threaded through the body, it totally eliminates that possibility. You're not going to lose it when you cast or troll. Short strikes aren't going to be an issue anymore, and it's actually going to be alive. It's swimming naturally in its natural environment, which ultimately gets you that big catch. Right, and, you know, there's some people who go, oh, that's cruel or whatever, and, you know, I think the other way around, right? If you j jamming a hook into your back is probably more, much more cruel or putting it into your mouth or what have you, you know, right up the lip and, and all that. It's, I think it's, this is probably even more, do you say humane for fish? If, it, if you can be humane with bait fish, because at the end of the day, let's remember. It's yeah, bait. exactly. Its job is to catch you a bigger fish. Yep. Yep. So you can feed your family. You know, I mean, uh, yes, I have gotten, gotten that feedback that it's inhumane and it hurts them, but it's actually the opposite. What people don't realize is that there is nothing that you're puncturing when you thread a bait through the GI tract because there's nothing in the way. You're not injuring it. It doesn't bleed. It truly is uninjured and swimming on your line when you rig them this way. And how did you, uh, you know, how did you figure this out? Where did this idea come from? So um, I grew up in Green Bay, Wisconsin. So I was always fishing as a kid. And wait a second. Wait a second. Don't tell me you're a Packer fan. Not only a fan, but an owner. Come on, go oh, back. Oh, no. Well, we're in Minneapolis, St. Paul, so we we can still be friends, even though we can be rivals with the purple and the green and gold. Yeah, absolutely. We can't all be perfect like us Packer fans. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so tell us more. Tell us about, you know, how you, you grew up in Green Bay, and then you must have been fishing a lot as well, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what, that's what the pastime is, fishing and football. 
So, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, after a while, it actually ended up um, after a fishing trip, a very dear friend of mine, you know, was just sitting around like, there's got to be a better way. Why are we spending all this money on live bait? And we're killing it. You can get one catch if you can even get a catch because you're losing it when you're casting, you know, or trolling. And we just kind of just started spitballing different ideas and um, different approaches that we could do to rig the bait better in a way so that we could actually save money on the bait and get more catches. So we ended up taking a bait fish to the university and getting an MRI done. And that's how we discovered their straight line intestinal tract. Wait a second. Where does that come from? <laughs> I don't know. You've got to be sitting around probably even drinking some beer thinking, let's get an MRI of this thing. Where I mean that's that's just a crazy idea. I don't that's not natural thinking. Yeah, no, it's not. Um, and it's all because it's all of because of the people that you know. And you're exactly right. You sit around a table, you have a couple of beers, you sit fire a bunch of different ideas. Some of them stick, some of them don't. And what happens most of the time is people the next day just brush those ideas aside. Well, we didn't. We actually acted on that and we um, found out about the straight line intestinal tract and then just kind of developed the idea from there. It started with thinking about a crochet hook, a sewing needle, some way that we could develop the rod, the threading rod, to make sure that it was completely smooth, that it wouldn't puncture anything, and that it would, in fact, still keep that bait fish alive. So it all kind of developed from there. And then, of course, you got to have the bobber on top so you don't mm. lose it when you drop it in the water. Right, right. So you bring this fish into the, wherever, the doctor's office or something, and they're probably looking at you like, are you bleeping crazy or what? <laughs> Right? Well, of course, because it's such a crazy concept, but those are the best ones because, you know, some people maybe have thought of it before, but didn't have the, the connections or the friends or the associates to be able to bring it to fruition. And thank God for friends and family that, that we were able to do that. Yeah. And um, somebody's insurance paid for this MRI or... <laughs> 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 the fish was on your insurance plan or something? Yeah, exactly. It was my dependent. <laughs> and how long, how, long, how long ago was this? Um, the whole developmental piece of it, that's been um, about six or eight years in the work. Since actually being in um, to market has been four years. Four years. Okay. And you are in uh, North Carolina, right? Yes. I'm in Nightdale, North Carolina. Nightdale. And that's, uh, what's the major city? Is it Raleigh? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, so there's a lot of fishing going on down there as well with the, you know, the coast and everything. And so did you start, once you had prototypes, did you just start knocking on fishing shops doors or what did you do then? That's exactly what I did. And um, i was still living in Wisconsin at that time. So basically what I did is just packed up a bunch of supplies, a bunch of threads, um, and I would go right into their bait tanks, pick up one of their minnows and thread a minnow and that, I mean, once people see this work, they're like, oh my gosh, yeah, you see yeah. the light bulb go off and yep. you see how great of a product, not a gimmick, but an actual legit product it is. And then they're hooked, you know? So that's exactly what I did. I went from bait shop to bait shop to bait shop all over the country, up and down the Midwest. Um, and now I'm branched out to the coast. But yeah, I literally would pack up my kids, throw up tents in the suburban fishing poles, and we would just drive the entire country every summer when the kids were off of school and hit up every bait shop we could find. That's crazy. There had to be prototypes too, right? Oh yeah. I mean, we had to go, we met with a precision metal manufacturer for the rod itself because we wanted to, like I said, you it's completely smooth when you rub your fingers down it. We wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything that could potentially hurt the bait fish to deter our ultimate purpose of keeping that bait alive. I mean, even the, the notch that's at the end of the threader, it's completely smooth. And, and we had to go through a lot of trial and error to get it, which perfect, which it's at right now. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of was my next question. There had to be some, you know, failures or screw ups along the way, because generally when you're prototyping any product, no matter what it is, you know, you're going to, they're not going to work right away. 
right? Exactly. Exactly. So that took some time for you to so you know to kind of get it right or to where it is today, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sure did. Well, how long do you think that took from you know the very first time you did that to what you have, you know, today? Oh gosh, that was a probably a three or four year process. Okay. I mean, and because you've got, a, you, you've got there's so much that goes into it. Plus, this is um, you're also talking about um, patents because this there's nothing uh, out there on the market like this with the intention of keeping your live bait alive on your line. So we definitely wanted to get this patented, and that's, I mean, that is an undertaking in and of itself. And that's, it's an expensive proposition too, right? Exactly, exactly. But, um, so yeah, the the legwork behind developing something like this is, is very extensive, and then bringing it to market, that's a whole nother beast in the game. Right. And you manufacture them right in North Carolina, right? You have, you're... In your office there, or is there a you know a shop behind you, or, or yeah, I'm yep, I manufacture um, right out of the shop on my property. I, I manufacture from here, I ship from here, I um, sell from here, you name it. Right. Okay. And then they're sold at retail, you know, like uh, tackle shops and so forth. And you you also do some Amazon and also from your website as well, right? Yeah, we're in about 150 uh, small bait and tackle shops throughout the United States, um, as well as Bass Pro. We're in about 30 Bass Pro shops throughout the U.S., and then we've got our website and then Amazon and eBay as well. Yeah, Bass Pro had to be a good win for you, right? It was amazing. I cannot tell you how good it felt leaving um, their headquarters that day. It was it was surreal. It was You're just surreal. Doing, doing the little dance, like woohoo. <laughs> oh yeah, talk about your the big catch. They yes. are the big. <laughs> yeah, that's that's cool. That, that that had to be really a cool feeling. Yes. How, many, how big is your 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 group, your company? How many employees do you have? Small. It fluctuates um, because obviously it's a seasonal business. Um, so anywhere between two and five employees is is all we have at this point. Yeah. Um, of course, we're still new. We've only been to market for um, about three and a half years now. So as we grow, we will, and I'm excited for, we're going to need to expand our sales team. It's going to be key in expanding that as well as production. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's important for a young company to keep things lean and mean too, right? You know, you got to keep your costs in line and, you know, just like any business as a still in your startup phase. I mean, we're even younger than you are and I totally understand, you know, what that's all about. Oh yeah. It's all about the bottom line. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And you're, um, you, you mentioned being on the road quite a bit, it, you know, summer's here. So you're in your office, you're not traveling today, obviously, yeah. but what's the schedule look like? Um, well, summer is my slowest time because everybody is out fishing instead of out going to expos and shopping. So usually, I usually travel um, from September through the end of March, about two to three times per month. And then from March to August, it's only once or twice. So it's, it's a nice little break in summer. But let me tell you, it is nonstop from September to March. Oh, being on the road is, um, you know, my previous life, I was for 20 years. I, I mean, there were years where I had 100 flights, you know, and it, it just, it grinds on you. It's, it's, it's hard work. People think, Oh, it's travel. You, you know, it's glamorous and all this, but what they don't see are, you know, misconnections or, um, you know, flights that just got canceled or maybe something happened to your car while you're driving with the kids or whatever they did. People just don't, don't see that. It's a grind. It is. It's a lot of work. And I don't, um, because of, of the type of product I'm selling, I don't fly anywhere because it would be very difficult. To see. Yeah, I would think so. I don't think TSA would like that product. <laughs> no, not so much. So I literally drive everywhere. I mean, all across the country. I always joke, I wish you could get frequent flyer miles on your vehicle. <laughs> hey, you know, maybe there's an idea there somewhere. I don't know. But how many miles do you have on that Suburban? <laughs> um. It's actually new, so I've only got about 130,000 miles on it right now, but I 
I put on quite a bit. That's see. that's a new car, folks. <laughs> she says it's new and it has 130,000 miles on it. That's that's a road warrior for you. Oh yeah, it is. Actually, I just had to replace the transmission on it, so that's no fun at all. But and then traveling with the kids too. They, do they do they enjoy it, or they must get tired of it as well? I mean, you know, it's it's tough for them as well, right? Yeah, but you know what? We always make it fun, and we make stops along the way. Like I said, well, it's nothing for us to pull over and and drop a line in the water and just relax and have a picnic. Or you know, it's I try to make it as stress free as possible. I don't take the kids to all of the shows. Sure. Um, but when I do take them, it, it's more about having an adventure and and seeing the country than anything else. Because I I've, I've always you know, and this is why I love this business so much too, is because it allows you to really get your family outside and connected and enjoying the outdoors and the environment and seeing the country as opposed to stuck inside on a video game or, you know, not really being able to explore or do anything adventurous. So we love it. I mean, it, it's, it's who we are. We're, we've got There's, there's a really cool meme out there that I saw. In fact, I think we even posted it too, but um, it's something like um, uh, we need less Xboxes and more tackle boxes. Oh yeah. Something like that. Yep. That that was pretty cool. And it shows a, a little kid with a fishing rod and a tackle box walking, you know, down a road to a lake. It's pretty, it's actually, I should send it to you. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Hey, what, what advice would you have for anybody who wants to get into the fishing business and make it a career? Um, don't take no for an answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, that's how you got that Bass Pro account, right? You just keep oh, knocking on that door. Oh, yes. I knocked on that door for a solid year and a half. I mean, it was not easy. You have got to, and I'm not a, a person that likes to hear the word no. So. <laughs> <laughs> So I will not take no for an answer. That's awesome. That's awesome. So just basically perseverance maybe is what you. Absolutely. It's a hard industry to break into. Um, so you really have to be, you have to know your stuff. Know, you know, know what you're talking about. Be, you know, be true and, and just really don't give up on it. If you truly believe in it, don't give up on it and, and you will succeed. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good lesson. You can probably, I think you can sort of port that over to to anything in life and in in business. So that's 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 good advice. What is your favorite thing about the business? Oh gosh, I love uh, I love the the people. I love being able. I love doing the the expos, and um, I'll go. I'll I'll fill up a twenty gallon fishing tank and have minnows in there, and I'll show people right, right in front of them how to spread their minnow, I'll hand the minnow to them and have them do it. And that first reaction that, oh my gosh, that is my favorite thing. Yeah. To show somebody and see their excitement into from a product that my family created. We put our blood, sweat, and tears into this um, product and to see other people's enjoyment and to know that they're going to go out and they're going to go fishing with their family and their friends, and they're going to enjoy it more than just what I see when I sell it to them. They're going to enjoy it forever. And yeah. That is what keeps me going. I love it. Yeah, that's that OMG factor that, I mean, it, I mean, it results in an instant sale too, right? So they walk away with some some product, a handful or one or two or, how, you know, however. How are you selling these um, threaders? You um, have different, different packaging, right? Yeah, so I've got two different sizes, and that's really all that you need. Because this small threader here that I have, this is going to work um, to rig one inch all the way up to 10 inch bait. And it comes in a kit like these. There you go. All right. Product, a little product placement there. <laughs> <laughs> so that gives you the threader tool, a couple extra loose hooks, and then the pre threaded shad. So you, you can then make your own leaders and, and whatnot with it. Um, so the small threader comes in this kit, and then we've got the large threader. These. So this one's going to be for your three-inch bait up to your 20-inch bait, and this one um, comes by itself. Because once you're into this size bait, 
you're really doing, you know, your custom leaders and your different hook sizes, because you can use whatever hook or line size that you want. The main tool that you need is the threader itself. Okay. And there's, the, so there's a couple different sizes and then different, um, you can buy different amounts in different packaging as well, right? Yes. You sell it in a single and what, a triple? Um, well, we, are you talking about the hook? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole package, because I know that, I mean, I know they're different, they're different sizes, and then they're different amounts in the bot in the package, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, the threader kits, they, they all have three loose hooks and a three threaded shad, and then the threader tool, and then the thread, the large threader that comes by itself, but we also sell packages of the um, leaders, so your, your hook with your line on it, and then we sell loose hooks. So you can tie your own leader, but we only um, sell and recommend double prong hooks with this um, bait rig. I noticed that you don't do it. You don't do a treble hook in there, right? No, no, because um, when we were going through the trial and error phase of developing the product, we found that the double prong hook balances your bait fish out. So ah. that's what gives it the natural swim. You can use a single or a treble. It's just not going to have that natural normal swim that it will with a double. So that's why we only sell the double prong hook. Yeah, it makes sense. Just it's just if you think about it, having that treble hook, you got that third one that's just kind of there and what is it doing? Whereas with the two, it just on either side of the fish, it's a lot more streamlined of a presentation. Yeah, sometimes that third hook will act as a rudder, so it'll swim in a circle. Sometimes with the, the single hook, it'll flip to one side. But what's also nice with the double hook is you can very easily flip them upward and then you've got your weedless application. Ah, okay. Dual purpose. All right, so there you go. Weedless application as well, everybody. So she, Ashley has everything. And, <laughs> and she's got everything taken care of. That's right. <laughs> what were you doing before you, know, you got into hook, line, and thread? Or you, what, what'd you do? Um, actually, construction. Um, I grew up, my, my dad always had a construction business growing up, so I, my first job was driving an off-road dump truck, um, so I um, kind of did that, and that, of course I moved into the office side of that, but I know I was, I was working construction, raising my babies, and then I got into And now, here you are, totally opposite. Who would have thunk, right? So 10 years ago, you never would have said, never in a million years would have said, you would be doing what you're doing today. No, no, and it's all just because I kind of dove right in, didn't take no for an answer, and and I feel really passionately about the product. I really believe in it, and I know, um, you know, I'm not going to quit until there's a threader in every angler's hand. Right. Something that is going to be that that useful and and handy that it will be in every tackle box. Well, when, you know, it's a good combination when you're passionate and you won't take no for an answer. I mean, that's, that's a pretty good combination. Passion is, is really, you know, I, I, I taught a class um, of a, some high school entrepreneurs. It was an online class. And, um, you know, they said, well, how do I start? What do I do? You know, and I said, well, what's your passion? You know, what do you like knitting? Do you like uh, fishing? Do you like uh, skateboarding? Um, what is your passion and, you know, try to develop some sort of business around that because so we were talking about, you know, passion and, you know, I taught this class and, um, I, what is your passion? The kids are saying, how do I start a business and how do I know? Well, you know, you followed your passion of fishing and, and I'm following mine after, you know, 20 years of, um, I was in the banking business in software. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, um, sorry to all my old customers out there and friends, but it's not the most exciting business in the world. <laughs> you know, going into a bank and talking about their software and checking accounts and things like that. But, you know, it was, it was, it was fun. We made it work, but now, you know, I'm just really trying to build this and follow my passion, which, which is fishing. Yeah. You know, I couldn't, I was a hockey player and being an NHL goaltender was not in the cards. So I figured I'd go into fishing. <laughs> yeah. 
so what what do you have coming up next Ashley that you know do you have a new product or what you know do you care to share any um, you know new developments or anything like that that's in the future for your company um, no new products at this point um, we've got uh, 20, 22 products in our line right now so um, the next mission of mine is to get to shark tank to get some ah water. yeah cool yeah so i think um with our hook line and spreader bait threader here we can definitely catch a shark so that is my next plan i think that will definitely get us to the global reach that we need in order to, to really boost boost our sales and get get in every tackle box well that's cool have you um started exploring that i mean is there a I mean, there's got to be a contact or an email, right, that you start with? Yes. Yep. And it, again, goes, goes back to continuing to knock on that door and not take no for an answer. So just like I got Bass Pro, I will get Shark Tank too. So keep an eye out for that. Well, that, that'll be awesome. And I'll just, I know you know this, but when you get to that point and you're in there, you, you better have your you-know-what together. Yeah. Because they don't call it Shark Tank for nothing, right? They, I've seen them just absolutely tear people apart. Um, yeah, I know. Um, I've, that makes me nervous too. But um, at the end of the day, it's all about the exposure. In, in my opinion, even if I, if I were to get a deal or not, at least I can get it out there and get um, in front of all of those people, somebody is going to be interested. Right, right. So, but I understand. Yes, my poop will definitely be in a group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets to that point, um, and, and I and I just believe in it so much that I I know I know that it'll get so get get there. So it's exciting. It's it's fun to be a part of. You know. Yeah, and especially when you can see the growth too. It's like your effort is actually you know it's working, and you know you're you're doing you're doing this you know, instead of the other way around, you know. Hey, you know, we really enjoyed having you on here, Ashley, and um, you got a really, really cool product there. And, uh, you know, I, I know you're growing like crazy. You're working your tail off. And, you know, congratulations on your success so far. And, you know, best of luck to you in the future. And uh, if we can help you in any way, you know, we'd be more than happy to help with whatever brainstorming or ideas or anything like that but um we're really really excited for you and 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 wish you guys the best of luck oh thank you bob thanks for doing this and having me it's been such a pleasure working with you it was so great meeting you in st paul i'm so glad that you you know were able to get that video and um it's, it's just been awesome working with you i'm excited to keep working with you and to keep building each other's brand and yeah yeah, I think we can do some cool things. So, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to that. So again, Ashley, thanks a lot for being here and thanks for watching everybody and uh, look forward to the next video cast from the World Fishing Alliance. We're not sure what it's going to be, but we know it'll be really, really cool. And in the meantime, lots of tight lines. Keep on fishing. Thanks, guys.